Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in this answer, upholds the civil authority. And it's something that the Pharisees did not expect at all. For them, it was unthinkable that a pious Jew could support their Roman overlords. It was something that perhaps the Herodians or the Sadducees, those who were more liberal, it was something they would expect of them, but they expected our Lord to say something against the Romans, which is why they tried to trap him in his speech in this way. And they're very surprised when he does quite the contrary. And in this answer of his, he doesn't tell them to simply perhaps tolerate the Roman rule because it would be imprudent to do otherwise. If they didn't do that, the Romans would come and subdue them. He actually goes much further than that. He makes it a question of justice. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. It implies more than a mere toleration. It implies something that ought to be done. And this is something, once again, the Pharisees did not expect, did not understand. It is a response which we also might, in some way, not understand. The pious Jews took exception to their pagan overlords. And perhaps in our day and age, we who strive to be good and virtuous may also be tempted to take exception to our authorities who seem intent on the exact opposite, either the civil authorities or even the authorities in the church. Christ's response upholds the authority and respect for it because that is the order which God established. And it's important that we understand the truly Catholic attitude we must have towards our authorities. Now, there are many things we could talk about in this regard. We could speak about the time when it is necessary to obey or sometimes disobey our authorities. If what they tell us to do goes against the law of God, we have to disobey them. That is something that we have to judge. God gave us an intellect and free will. He doesn't want us to simply be mere automatons. He wants us to use our capacity of judgment to see if whatever we're commanded by our authorities is in accordance with his law or not. And if it is not, then we have to disobey. If it is, we have to obey. As I say, we could consider this, but that's not what I'm going to try to look at here. I want to consider rather the spirit we ought to have in front of our authorities, be, there, be they good or bad. The modern world, following John Locke, following the spirit of the revolution, echoing Satan's cry, I will not serve, we have tend- the tendency to look upon authority as something of a necessary evil, something which we have to submit to, but nonetheless, it's an evil. For John Locke, men exist, they should exist only as individuals, not in society. Each man should be free to do whatever he pleases. The only need to exist in society arises because I need to defend myself against all the other individuals. And so society itself is a necessary evil, which brings about the necessary evil of authority, because if society is going to exist, there has to be someone who directs everyone to the goal. And so he says that this submission of oneself to an authority is an evil, 
It's something which is necessary, but nonetheless an evil. And this theory destroys all respect, all reverence for society, for authority. It makes human beings nothing more than a bunch of individuals coexisting together, selfishly trying to gain as much as one can at the expense of all the rest. And this spirit results in a very wrong approach to authority, an approach which unfortunately is very common in today's world. It is a wrong approach which exists both in those who possess authority and in those who don't, those who have to follow it, who have to submit to it. Those who possess authority, well, they don't respect their own authority. They abuse it. And they use it, rather than to benefit the common good, they use it to benefit themselves, their own individual good. And that's what we call a tyranny. When one uses all of one's social abilities, all one's power, to try to benefit oneself rather than society at large. And we see that in those who have authority. They don't respect it and they abuse it and use it for their own ends. Those who do not possess authority, those who have to follow it, which is the vast majority of us, we also, if we have this spirit, we also do not respect authority. We see it as something to be always on one, one's guard against. It is something that we must mistrust. We always have to have that ability to see if my authority's commands are in accordance with what I think or not. Again, we do have to use our judgment to see if our authority's commands are in accordance with what God wants, but all too often we substitute ourselves for God in that regard. I have to constantly be defending my individual rights to keep back as much as I can from the authority to try to mitigate the damage that they cause me. In some cases, unfortunately, that reaction may be a necessity if the person in authority is abusing their power. But even if that's the case, we have to be careful to keep the proper spirit. We cannot be just a bunch of selfish individuals grasping for our own benefits. And that's the problem with most of the modern political systems. Karl Marx with his proletariat in the communism or socialism, even in our own vaunted democracy, if we are just a bunch of selfish individuals trying to grasp whatever we please, whatever we can, at the expense of everyone else, well, then whoever perhaps takes over the authority, they're going to be no better than the previous rulers because they will also abuse their authority. They had no respect for it in the first place. They're used to simply benefiting themselves as individuals on whatever way they can, and now that they have the power to do so, they will continue to try to benefit themselves as individuals at the expense of all the rest. Once again, this is a very common spirit in today's society, and it is not at all a Catholic one. The Catholic attitude before authority must be one of charity, one of respect, and one of confidence. Authority is a beautiful thing. It is a great gift from God. He gives to man a share in his own fatherhood. God is the creator, the director of all things that exist, and he delegates a little bit of this power to human beings. God uses his fatherhood to nurture, to direct, to increase, to perfect, it's not for his own good that he uses it, but for the good of his creatures. And the same goes for the authority that God chooses to share with those creatures, or at least the same should go for that authority. Those in authority are meant to use their power not for themselves, but for their subordinates, for the common good. They are meant to model themselves 
upon God's fatherhood. And the only way that can happen is if authority is approached with great charity, both by those who possess it and those who obey it. If we act only as individuals in this life, grasping whatever we can from all the rest, then we will never have any good system. The only political system that will ever be a good one is only going to be one which is based on charity, where we selflessly sacrifice our own interests for the common good, for others. Authority is something that has to be approached with great charity, and it is something which must be respected. It is a share in God's own power, an instrument of God's own fatherhood. We say all authority comes from God, God is the source of all of that. And so when I obey my authority, I am ultimately obeying God. And this authority that this person has comes from God, and I must respect it as such. It should be something which is painful for me if I am forced to disobey my superior. If my authority commands me to do something which is against the law of God, well, yes, I'm obliged to refuse obedience. But it should be something which at the same time, in a certain sense, hurts me to have to do that. If if the hierarchy of the church, if the leaders of our country command us to do something which is wrong, we have to disobey that. If it goes against the law of God, we have to obey the law of God and not the law of men. But at the same time, it is something which should, we should find somehow painful. This is my authority. This is my representative from God telling me what to do. This is, in a certain sense, my father. And if my father is telling me to do the wrong thing, then yes, I have to refuse obedience. But it is something which should be painful. We live in a time when authority is not at all respected. Most of all, it seems, by those who possess it. And if the good Lord has seen fit to give us a time when our rulers are perhaps incompetent or even malicious, using their power for their own good and no one else's, not respecting their own authority, well, let us not sink to their level. We have to see the example of our Lord Jesus Christ and his passion. He demonstrates great respect for the authorities, even if the person with that authority is abusing it, even if the person with that authority is using it to kill our Lord Jesus Christ. We see that also with St. Paul in the Acts of the Apostles. At one point, one of the priests who was the high priest, the chief priest, and St. Paul didn't know this, he was saying something which was very juvenile, very much an attack against St. Paul, and St. Paul rebukes him, and then is rebuked by someone else saying, you should not say this to the high priest. And St. Paul immediately apologizes for his statement, which was very much warranted by the high priest who was absolutely not doing what he should have been doing. But St. Paul apologizes and says, I'm sorry, if I knew he was the high priest, I would not have said that. He shows this great respect for the authority, even if the person is abusing their authority. We must not sink to their level. So great charity, great respect, and also great confidence. Authority, I said, is an instrument of God's own fatherhood. Our human authorities are merely instruments that God uses to bring about his designs. And that is something that we have to remember. We ought to have confidence, and I would say not confidence in our authority insofar as they are human. As human beings, they're sinners just like us. They're fallible just like us. So not confidence in that respect but insofar as they are God's instruments. And this is something which, again, is especially important when we're confronted with all the problems of authority these days. 
God is so powerful that he can use anything to bring about his designs. He is capable of using the free actions of men, even ones done out of pure malice. He's, using, he's capable of bringing great good even out of evil. And so when I say our confidence in authority, I mean our confidence ultimately in Almighty God. He doesn't want my authority's failings. He doesn't want perhaps even their malice. But he does want my patience under such failings. And he certainly does use those evils which I am forced to suffer in order to perfect me. All too often that we forget that it is our good God who directs the course of our lives down to the smallest detail. Things do depend on our free will and on the, that of others, but Almighty God is so wise that he's able to foresee all our possible choices and so powerful that he's, he can use our choices to bring about the result which is best in the long run. We have to have a great confidence in God. Authority is simply one of the instruments that he uses to direct our lives. And we have to have this confidence that even with the malicious choices of our authority, perhaps, God will nonetheless use that to bring the greatest good to us. So let us try to have a bit more of that proper Catholic spirit when it comes to our approach to authority. There are times when we must disobey it, yes, but it is necessary that we have that great proper Catholic appreciation for it. It's absolutely not something that we should, as is very common in the modern world, have a great disrespect for and see only as an evil. It is in fact a very great gift that God has given to men. So let us ask Almighty God to help us have that proper appreciation and especially, of course, to give us good authorities. Let us ask our Blessed Mother, the one to whom God has entrusted the peace of nations, that she may bring both in our country and in the church good authorities, men who have proper respect for that gift that God has bestowed upon them. And let us also try to have that same respect for that gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.